exactly how you onboard new clients as a virtual assistant. But also, one thing you definitely don't want to do. I know it can feel confusing, overwhelming, you want to look professional, you don't want to forget anything, and more importantly, you don't want to look a dick in front of a new client, right? <laughs> don't worry. Every query you've got about onboarding a new client as a virtual assistant will be answered by the end of this short video. My name's Catherine Gladwin and I've been a virtual assistant since late 2015 and I've been helping women just like you run their own successful virtual assistant businesses since 2018. At the end of the video, make sure you hit subscribe, but also keep watching because I've got a special little treat for you as well. So two things that are really important about onboarding is this is your possibly your first proper interaction with the client after the discovery call. So you need to show them how slick and in control you are, but also you need to not overwhelm them. You going to make their life easier so we need to do that from the start. I'm probably going to dispel something you think about onboarding by the end of this short video. So what is onboarding? You might even be watching this video and thinking, no, I don't know what it is, just saw virtual assistant for press play. So you've already had your discovery call with a potential client, it went really well, you know what services you're going to give them and you just need to get going. So what's next? That's when you start onboarding. Onboarding basically means you've got everything in place to enable you to get started on the tasks or services that you're gonna be providing to the client. Everything you need to get going and the client also has everything they need to know that everything's under control by you. But do remember, we're not supposed to overwhelm them. I'm gonna make it easy, just bear with me. It's ever such a short video. So here's what you need to do first. The first thing is to send over your terms of business and booking form. And all you want the client to do is to sign them so you fill in the booking form. If you've not yet got a terms of business or you downloaded some contract from the internet then head over to Coffee Clatch. I'm an affiliate of theirs so I can give you a 10% off code. The code is CATH10. Hopefully that's showing on the bottom now. Head over to Coffee Clatch. They're £60. You get your terms of business and your booking form. Terms of business is all written for you by lawyers and the booking form, you fill in yourself. It just says about what you're gonna do, how much they're gonna pay, when they need to pay by, what their name is, etc., etc. It's got everything in there that they need. And if you send it over using an electronic sign-in software, I use Eversign and it's free for three contracts a month, so you won't need to pay yet. Then they can just do it electronically. They don't need to print anything out. 21st century shit going on here. Plus, if you're using Eversign like I do, you know as soon as they've opened the contract, you get an email to say that they've opened it and then an email to say that they've completed it so you're not sat there on tender hooks thinking did it arrive have they got it if they is there a problem you can see they've opened it and then a few minutes later they've usually completed it now the 60 pound that you pay from coffee clatch for the terms of business and booking form is just a one-off payment and don't forget you get that 10 percent off with cath 10 you can use the contracts for every client forever so it's a, just once 60 quid well worth it and they stand up in the uk courts so please don't download anything from the internet because it may not be relevant to UK law. Okay, just after you've sent the contract, you don't need to wait for them to open it or sign it. I want you to send the client a deposit invoice or an invoice for the full amount if you know what the whole job's gonna cost. You must always get any new client to pay money up front. It enables you to know that they're genuine. They've then got your bank details into their bank, so it's easier to them for them to pay future invoices and things like that. It. And that is often all you'll need for onboarding. Terms of business, signed, book informed to confirm what you're doing and a deposit invoice and away you go. Especially if all you're doing is receiving tasks via email that don't require logins, etc. However, if you are doing tasks that require logins, like the best selling service, email and diary management, you're gonna to wanna to send over a few questions and also get their login details. Now, if you're one of those that have done my email and diary management course, then you'll know that I've included a questionnaire in there that you can send to clients to get all the information you possibly need without overwhelming them to enable you to get started. So if it is gonna be a task that you need to get information from them, really think about whether you do or whether you can find that information yourself somewhere else try not to give them anything to do try and do as much as possible but there will be instances where you need to ask for stuff so make sure that it's 
just what you need, nothing extra, and make it as easy as possible for them. Use a Google form or just put a couple of questions in an email or something like that. Now I promised you I'd tell you one thing you definitely don't need. You may have seen people talking about welcome packs, sending new clients welcome packs. You don't need it, it's just gonna overwhelm them. And I know some of your questions are about like, well, how do they know how I work? How do they know when to pay me? It's all in the booking form, which is two pages, maybe two and a half at most. And all the boxes are already there for you. And it's just limited information, just what they need. If you give them a welcome pack, it's like it's too much for them to read. And if they think they've got to read that before they get started, you'll see people start to drop off. I've never had anybody, I've never lost a client at onboarding stage because I've always made it really slick by using the coffee clatch terms of business and booking form. It just shows that slick, in control, and no overwhelm, the two most important things that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Ooh, I almost forgot. There's a likelihood that you'll be using data processing. You'll be processing either their data or maybe their client's data. So you need to send a data processing form over as well. And that also comes with the £60 that you pay for the terms of business and the booking form. So if that is the case, the data processing form is, is one thing that the client does need to complete themselves because that's information that you won't be able to find. So if you need to send the data processing form over, send that over as a Word document or completable PDF if you're able to do that. You get them to send it back to you and then you sign it and send it via Eversign as well. So that's it. Onboarding. Tick. Like I said at the beginning, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you never miss a video. And also here's that code again so that you can get 10% off at Coffee Catch. Thanks for watching.